Rosemary is this plant that is aromatic. If you make it like this and then you smell it, fantastic. And it has been used for centuries as a medicinal plant and also as a condiment in food. The thing is that in recent years, its popularity has increased a lot because research has been coming out that reinforces or confirms many of these medicinal properties. But there are people who do not know it yet. And it is a shame because there are people with chronic diseases that maybe take a lot of medication or want to look for more natural solutions. And it is a shame that they do not know plants or solutions that are very easy to access them. This if you use it from the field, of course, before you use it, you will have to clean it, you will have to wash it, but you can also buy it in herbalist shops or in pharmacies. That's why in this video what I'm going to do is to review the benefits of rosemary and what are its ways of use, especially rosemary tea. Improves circulation. It does this by causing a dilation of the blood vessels, so it will lower blood pressure. We already know that when blood pressure is high, it is a factor that increases the risk that you will have cerebral cardiac problems. So this dilation of blood vessels would be a factor. It also improves the microcirculation, that is the blood vessels, the capillaries are smaller, and this also causes more oxygen to reach the tissues, and also more easily remove waste products of metabolism, and also reduces the risk of thrombosis by anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects of substances that carries this rosemary. All this acts together, making the blood circulation with the passage of time is better. The warning to keep in mind before consuming rosemary tea, or in any of its forms, is that if you consume it in excess, there could be side effects that I will discuss at the end, and that in case you have any medical problem or any disease especially if there are several diseases and take medications, you should consult with your doctor before to tell him that you are taking this in supplement form or if they are other herbs or other supplements or medicinal plants should also be consulted. Rosemary is beneficial for intestinal health and has been used since ancient times for this purpose to reduce gas or intestinal bloating, to facilitate the movement of the intestines to relieve pain or cramps, abdominal pains, tummy aches, and to make digestion easier. It does this because it has antispasmodic properties. This means that it relaxes the muscles of the gastrointestinal tract, that is the digestive tract, and this decreases the symptoms and also improves digestion because it stimulates the secretion of bile by the gallbladder and this also facilitates the digestion of fats. Combined, these effects improve digestion. It also has anti-inflammatory properties that together with the above makes it interesting with irritable bowel syndrome is useful. It is useful for inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. It also serves to maintain a balance within the intestinal microbiota I bacteria, good bacteria inside our intestine, which are very important for our health. And it does this because it has prebiotic properties. That is, they are properties that serve to feed the good bacteria in our gut and also has antimicrobial properties that make it attack the bad bacteria and bad fungi, prevents them from growing. And these combined effects make it good for the digestive system and for the intestine in particular. It is beneficial for the brain, that is, for memory, for concentration, to improve mood, for situations of anxiety or fatigue. For all these beneficial properties are attributed that have been confirmed by different studies. But in fact, already in ancient Greece, as early as 500 years before Christ, it was used by students for its effect. Beneficial effects in this regard for memory, concentration. This is attributed in part to the improvement of circulation that we mentioned before, which would help reduce brain damage after suffering a stroke, that is a stroke or a brain blockage by a clot, 
It is also attributed to the improvement in the intestinal flora, in the intestinal bacteria, which on other occasions we have already said that it is closely related to the brain. Also the antioxidant, anti-inflammatory effects have neuroprotective effects, and this would be beneficial to prevent neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, dementia, and even Parkinson's disease. It helps to improve blood sugar levels, which is important for people with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes mellitus. It would increase insulin sensitivity, that is the insulin produced by our pancreas, will have more effect at the cellular level, specifically the muscle cells and the sugar that is in the blood. This glucose will pass more easily into the cells due to the effect of the insulin produced by your pancreas. Rosemary has anti-inflammatory effects that make it useful for people who have joint pain problems with inflammation in case of arthritis, osteoarthritis, or muscle pain. And this both in the form of rosemary introduced into the normal kitchen as well as in the form of rosemary tea. There are even some studies in which local application in the form of essential oils, i.e. on the skin of the painful area, reduce the pain. Apart from the anti-inflammatory effects that we have said that it could also have on the digestive system, as in the circulatory system, rosemary boosts and strengthens the immune system in a way that reduces infections. This is because it has substances with antimicrobial effects apart from antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. This makes it effective in inhibiting the growth of viruses, bacteria and fungi, and in fact it has also been traditionally used as a natural preservative and to make food last longer. Rosemary is beneficial for the liver because it reduces the accumulation of fat in the liver from food. That is to say that it would be interesting for people who have fatty liver but it also reduces cell damage or inflammation in liver cells caused by drugs or toxic substances. That is to say that it is interesting if you have some hepatic problem to consult because perhaps it is interesting to introduce it in your diet as a seasoning or in the form of rosemary tea. Rosemary is beneficial for the skin and hair because it reduces premature aging, improves wound healing, improves seborrheic dermatitis, acne, psoriasis, even alopecia areata, which are placas that remain without hair. There is evidence that it is beneficial for this. And why is that? Because of the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effect that we have discussed, but also because we have said that it improves circulation and also has an effect of improving the fat or oil that is on the surface of the skin or hair. By increasing all this quality and improving it, it has these beneficial effects. This is used both rosemary in the form of seasoning in food and rosemary tea, i.e. infusion, decoction, but also use it locally, i.e. directly applied to the skin or hair in the area where there is the problem in the form of infusion that has been previously prepared or even in the form of essential oils. But in this case of applying it as a treatment, you should always consult a doctor or a specialist in dermatology to make the most appropriate treatment. The rosemary reduces toxic elements of the food, specifically when you make the meat to high temperatures, that is to say, when you cook the barbecue, the grill, or fried in which this meat is made a lot, some substances are produced that are called heterocyclic amines, which have been related to some types of cancer, such as colon cancer, but also breast and prostate cancer. What happens, and it has been seen in a study, is that by marinating this meat before cooking it, that is to say by mixing it with seasonings, among which rosemary is important, what happens is that these toxic products are reduced by up to 90%. Of course, the main thing would be not to make or not to consume meat or fish that is very, very, very well done or very fried or very cooked at high temperatures in the first place. But we must take into account that it is a good idea to mix these foods with rosemary. Rosemary is beneficial for the eyes because it decreases the aging of the eyes. 
so it decreases the evolution towards cataracts, which is an opacification. Of the crystalline lens, which is the structure we have in the front part of the eye and age-related macular degeneration, which is a problem of a structure that is in the back of the eye and that can also cause blindness over the years. So rosemary has compounds and substances that reduce the risk of this occurring and slow it down much more. This is mainly based on laboratory studies with animals, but this effect is very interesting. What are the health benefits of rosemary due to? Well, they are due to polyphenols called carnosol, rosmarinic acid and caffeic acid, which have quite potent antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties. Even carnosol is considered to have anti-tumor properties and also has other types of polyphenols called flavonoids such as epigenin or luteolin that interact with these other substances and globally this is what explains these beneficial effects. This has been studied mainly in the laboratory, in test tubes and also in laboratory animals, but many of these beneficial effects are being investigated and confirmed in humans. What forms of presentation of rosemary can we find? This will depend on the use we want to give it, but here, for example, we will talk about how to prepare rosemary tea or, better said, rosemary infusion. You can also use the decoction, which is a variant. Then you can use cooking in the form of powders or various extracts sold in the markets. Then the supplements or rosemary capsules that are in powder form, which put them inside the capsules and are marketed. Also rosemary tinctures, which are liquid extracts that are mixed with alcohol, that are also used medicinally orally, that is, through the mouth. Then there are the essential oils of rosemary, which we have already mentioned that can be used topically, that is directly on the skin mixed with a base oil, then in the form of ointments and creams, and marketed in different ways also for cosmetic purposes. There are uses that are in aromatherapy, used in diffusers, in baths, in massages, to find a relaxing effect, an effect to fight against stress, as a natural air freshener can be used, but this, without complication, I use it by putting a few sprigs of rosemary in a little water, and it generates an aroma that is very good. It has also been used as a disinfectant, also in gardening, in landscaping, for decoration. But these are other uses that do not interest us here. How is rosemary tea prepared? The correct name would be an infusion of rosemary. And what you do is to boil 240 or 200 milliliters of water over medium heat and then leave it on low heat. And in a cup, you have a teaspoon or two teaspoons of fresh or dried rosemary leaves. If they are fresh, you have to have cleaned them first and the water that is boiled, you put it inside the cup in which you have this content in rosemary and let it sit there for two or three minutes. Then you strain this liquid, leave out the rosemary leaves, and the liquid will have the beneficial substances, and you can drink it fresh or hot according to your taste. There are people who put some sweetener, or put a little sugar, a little honey, a little maple syrup, but I think it is best to consume it directly. Then another way is to use the cooking one which would be the same. The only thing is that instead of putting the hot water inside the cup that has the two teaspoons of rosemary, what you do is when the water is boiling, you put the rosemary leaves, these two teaspoons or one teaspoon, and then you wait on medium heat for about five minutes for the substances to be extracted. The cooking will have a stronger flavor than the infusion and perhaps they will extract more beneficial substances, but this is already a little to taste. Are there any risks or rosemary side effects? Well, yes, you can have them, like any product we consume. There can always be a risk of allergy in the first place, whether you consume it orally, in the form of an infusion, as a condiment, any of the forms we have discussed as if you put it on directly on the skin. Therefore, if you have skin problems, always consult your doctor or dermatologist and of course do not put it directly on wounds or burns. This should not be done. Then if you consume it in excess, 
that is, more than two cups of two cups of tea or infusion a day, there is always the possibility that it can cause digestive problems, bloating, abdominal pain, nausea, even vomiting. Normally this will be when it is consumed excessively, but this happens with any other food or any type of plant that is consumed. Then, in situations of gallstones, that is, if you have gallstones, of course they are stones that are causing symptoms, rosemary is not recommended because we said before that it increased the secretion of bile and this could cause if any of these stones were to come out and an obstruction or some type of complication were to occur in other words in this case we must be very careful then in people who have bleeding disorders as we have said it reduces the possibility of clots forming because it has a certain anticoagulant effect and this in people who have blood disorders that predispose them to have bleeding could give some kind of problem and would have to be consulted. Then, in pregnancy and lactation it is not recommended because there is not enough data, and in the case of medications there could be some interactions with medications that are anticoagulants, those that serve to make the blood more fluid, there may be some kind of interaction. Then, with antihypertensive drugs, such as allopril, lisinopril, losartan, all these types of drugs could be potentiated by the effect of the rosemary, especially if you consume more than the recommended amount, also with diuretics that are also used for blood pressure, but they are also used for other heart and kidney problems, and then it could also interact with anti-diabetics, such as insulin, metformin, because it can enhance the effects of these drugs. So in these cases, we would have to be cautious. Remember to share this information with other people who may be interested or can benefit from these health videos and I leave here other videos on related topics, health, food, supplements that may interest you. Thank you very much, a hug, take care, and see you in the next video.